welcome. Today we are going to learn how to put leather on a feather and we'll begin beading in peyote round stitch. So here we have uh, some supplies we need. So a piece of leather, a uh, needle, I like to use the John James uh, size 10 beading needles. You're gonna need some glue. Uh, some people like to use the, the E6000 uh, jewelry glue. I like, for this project, Gorilla Glue, specifically the 10 second glue. When you purchase the package, it'll say 10 seconds on it. Um, this is perfect for this project, especially if you're anxious to get started on your beadwork. You don't have to wait 24 hours like you do with the E6000. So the binder clips are going to help us hold the leather on while it dries. Uh, scissors. Uh, I've got some leather lace uh, or if you prefer you can just cut a piece of your leather off for the loop on the feather. And then I've got uh, some beads here. So we'll get to the beads later. To get started, you're going to want to protect your workspace. So I've got a piece of cardboard and my feather and the leather. So this is kind of a short little stemmed feather, but it'll work for what we're doing here. To measure your, your leather, you're gonna bump it up against the, the fluff here. Uh, some people like to hold the fluff back, which is definitely an option. We'll go ahead and do that. It's as simple as just wrapping something loosely so your feather doesn't get caught up in your work. Especially working with Gorilla Glue, that would be such a mess. You can use a rubber band or whatever. Okay, so cutting your leather. I have excess down here, which is perfectly fine. You want about a quarter of an inch or so on both sides. So I've got it wrapped here and there's the about a finger uh, length left. So I'm going to cut here on this side does not have to be perfect. Okay. Next, uh, I'm gonna use the leather lace for my loop. And you just need enough to, uh, the tip, let's see. kind of eyeballing it. There's no real way to measure this other than hold it up against the feather. I'm only gluing the, again, maybe a finger width. So I'm gonna cut right about here. If you were to use your leather to do this, for example, like this nice little scrap piece here, make it as thin as you want, as wide as you want. See, it would be the same concept. 
just like that. So let's get our glue ready here. It doesn't take a whole lot since it's Gorilla Glue and again it's real quick drying time. I'm putting it on the lace and then you want to make sure so this is the front of the feather and that's the back you can tell because the it's raised right here I want my loop to go just like this Just hold it, squeeze it. I think I need just a little bit more here at the tip. Okay, so I've got my loop. So when you hang the feather, it'll be hung like this. Okay, so the next part, you wanna make sure you give enough glue around the whole stem of the feather here. Little stripe here, stripe on the back side and the sides, including on the leather piece. I'm going to set it down right in the middle and pull the edges. It doesn't matter really where your seam of the leather is because we're covering it with beads so don't be too concerned about your seam but you want to pull those edges together tight squeeze all around it let that glue distribute in there Okay, after a few seconds here, we can take a look. The edge is pretty good, except right here at the end. All right, this is where the binder clips can come in. Depending on how long your stem is, you might need two binder clips. I might do half and half, just to as close to the stem as possible. Okay, let that sit for 10 seconds. Cap back on the glue. And we did not make a mess. So I'm gonna remove the cardboard. We're done with the leather lace. So we'll set this aside for a second and get the beads ready. So what we are working with today is size 10 seed beads. They are round. They are equal in size and shape. Uh, another option, if you so choose. Uh, so these are gonna be in your beading kit. The other option is the Mayuki Delica beads. These ones here are size 11 Delicas. I'll show you a 
comparison here. You can also, these are size 10, but you can also use size 11. And here we've got just want to show you up close the differences. Let's see. Let's see if I can get this to focus. Not with my hand there. Maybe if we move everything. Working backwards here, so I apologize. There we go. Okay, so the black is the Mayuki Delica, equal in size and shape, and they lay pretty flat, square-like. When you're doing peyote stitch with the Delicas, you get a, a brick building type look. The seed beads, You'll see one is a little bit thinner than the others, but otherwise they're pretty equal in size and shape. You can pick and choose which beads you actually use in your work. They'll get the same look. So let's get started here. that would be considered dry. I've also got a little spoon here which really helps with cleaning up your beads. They scoop real nice. In your kit you're gonna have a little triangle dish. The edges of that dish can also be used as a scoop. Okay, I just need a little bit of each color to work with. We're just going to do a real simple design to start with. As you become familiar with the beading style, you can practice other patterns and we can even get into how to create your own pattern. Um, let's do this here. I'm going to show you how to trim this. Any pair of scissors work just fine. I might grab my longer ones. Here we go. <clears throat> right up against the edge as close as possible. Another reason why you probably want to wrap that fluff out of the way so it doesn't get caught. Okay, it's on there pretty good. It's pulling away a little bit right there at the edge, but we can add a dab of glue. Just a little dab. There we go. All right, your feather is ready for beading. Again, it doesn't matter where that seam is. And if you feel like it's popping up a little bit too much, you can cut a little closer. It's going to be hidden by your beadwork, so no big deal. Okay, I'm going to take this lace off. There we go. So it's a little wider in one area, but as you get to beading, it'll all look just fine. Okay, so I'm going to set that one aside and actually show you this other one I did where I had 
had cut the leather in a way where I had one long strip coming off the end of it and I tucked the long strip in and glued it down so it's connected here but it's not connected here and I glued and cut it real close to the stem here so this is another option so we're gonna get started on this one here because I have a special project I have to do gifting this one the string the thread okay so in your kit you're gonna have Nymo thread size B you can use B or D they're very similar in size another option if you so choose is wildfire or fireline fireline is like a fishing thread um, fishing line so either of these work too uh, the difference is these the wildfire and fireline have uh, no shredding and I use these for my three-dimensional peyote bead work that I do it holds the beads tighter the Nymo thread works just as good it's more popular in uh, jewelry making but it's got a nice tension to it too so that's why we're going to use this pull as much thread as you are comfortable with uh, an arm's length is approximately one yard and i wouldn't go much more than that if you run out of thread in the middle of your project it's pretty easy to end that thread and start a new one we can do that in another video so here I've got about a yard worth another neat tool I included in your kit is a, a threader tool which I have somewhere hold on Sorry about that. Okay, so the trays I told you about, the edges work for scooping. You can also put beads in the dish and work out of the dish. Um, but here's the tool. If you have trouble threading your needle, a lot of people do. I found these neat little handheld tools that have a little hook on the end of them and what you do is you take your needle you stick that end through the eye then you grab your thread you hook it wrap it around the the edge of the hook and you pull it through Ideally. Of course, this needle had a broken eye. Let's see if I can do this again. Maybe if I turn my hook upside down. And 
maybe if I stick the needle in the... I don't know. It's my first time using it, <laughs> so bear with me. I thought it was a neat tool for those that have trouble threading their needles. We'll figure it out. There we go. So it just took a little bit of um, angling. So I stuck the little hook in the eye with the hook facing down. I wrapped the thread around the hook and then I angled the tool, pulling the, the tool down. So not out like this but down and it pulled the thread right through. There we go. Another tip that I like to share is um, pulling your thread so that it has a shorter tail that you work with. So not, you're not doubling your thread, but I've got one end right here and the other end is about maybe 10 inches longer. So I'm working with this space and that allows you to pull with your, your pulling arm not so far and then less tangling happens too because the more thread the more tail you have exposed and you have to keep pulling to get it through the more tangling can happen so there's that the next step we're going to tie a knot at the end of our working thread here I like to do about uh, two inches from the end. You're going to do a knot maybe two, three, four times. You want it a big enough knot that it won't come through the leather. So that's three. You can kind of see the knot there. I'm going to do one more. Okay, there we go. We've got a nice knot there. Okay, to get started, you have two choices. You can start beading from this end going this way, or you can start from this end going this way. My preference, because you've got this feather in the way, what I like to do, to keep in mind, if you do a design that is uh, one direction say uh, you're putting lettering or an image remember that you're gonna hang the feather from the loop so you want your image to be facing the right direction so when we get to those types of patterns you may want to start from this end work your way from the top of the pattern down or vice versa. Whatever your preference is, I can help you along the way. This one is gonna be one of those where I want, I'm gonna be putting uh, 2021 on here. So I want the 2021 and we're also putting a name on here. So, the name we're doing I think we're gonna it's this feather is supposed to be displayed for somebody and they didn't have a preference of which side was which so we could put the year on one side and the name on the other So let's just do a couple rows here to get you started so you have an idea of where we're going. 
So you're going to want to start either inside from your needle or along the edge here. We're going to do the edge from the crease. And I'm about uh, maybe a bead's worth up from the end. Because you do want a little bit of leather exposed. And I'm coming up from the seam up through the leather. We're going to poke right through. You can kind of see where that's coming out. So when you pull it, you've got your knot stopping the thread. This tail is going to be folded up along the seam. You can hold it down while you're working and the beads will cover it. Okay, so let's do a red base. So the first thing you want to do is load up your needle and thread with a bunch of beads. We'll get to counting here in a second, but holding it tight, you can see it's wrapping about halfway, so we got to add more. The point of getting a good uh, peyote going, especially when you're working in a round stitch, you always want an even number of beads. So once we get enough on here where it comes back to touch the first bead, then we're going to count and we'll see how many we have. See, I'm, I wrapped that, the beads around and I'm holding my finger against the back here to hold it still. But I also want to make sure it's still tight. So those beads are touching. So I'm going to count this now. We've got 5, 10, 15, 20. And that's an even number. I got lucky. If it were on a 21 or 23 or 19, you're going to want to add one or remove one depending on how tight or loose they are on here. So using these, my thumb and pointer, pushing the beads. And it doesn't matter which way you wrap. Whichever way you wrap, that ultimately is going to be which direction you're going to be beating. So if I wrap for me, this is uh, going around counterclock. No, this is clockwise. Going clockwise. Then that means all of my beadwork is going to go in that direction. If I were to wrap the other way, then all of a sudden I'll be beating the opposite direction. So pick a direction that works best for you. I am, I'm going to go this way. Okay, so the beads are practically touching. So now what I'm going to do is take my needle. I'm going to come through the first bead and a few more. Uh, I've got five beads here. And pull it through. Get that tail out of the way. You want to 
hold tight. Okay, so this first row that you've added actually counts as rows one and two. And you'll see what I mean when we, we get to starting. Let me turn the feather around here. Okay, so got it tight, but it keeps wanting to loosen up. So I'm gonna, <laughs> takes a little bit of work here, but I'm gonna hold the beads in the back with my pinky so they stay. Because if you let go, it, the beads wanna fall. Gravity helps that. So holding the beads in the back with my pinky. The next thing you wanna do is pick up a single bead and we'll see if we can get a closer image here. I'm gonna make some room. All right, so you, you've got your thread coming out of that bead there. You can sort of see it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip over the next one and you want your needle to go through the second one from where the thread's coming out. It's starting to loosen up again. So as you pull tight, it'll come tight again. I'm using my thumbnail also. See how that white bead sits on top of the red? It pushed the red one down. That's what we want. So now your thread's coming out of this red one here in front of my thumb, and we want to go through the second one. So we're gonna pick up another single bead, skipping the one next to where the thread's coming out, but we wanna go through the second one If your bead tries to go underneath, push it to the top and pull it tight. Now we're starting to get a little bit of a zigzag going. And we, same concept, the entire project. This is how peyote stitch works is you skip one and you add a bead. So it's pushing one bead down and that lowest one is considered row one. And the one in the middle here is considered row two. The white one is now considered row three. So we'll skip one and go through the next one. And threads wrapping around the loop here. Loosen that up. And see, it, it tried to move to the bottom. We want it on top. So we're gonna, as we're tightening, pull it. And as I turn the feather, I'm still holding the back with my pinky. Pick up another. We're gonna skip one, go through the next. Pull it tight. Skip one, go through the next. Here's that tail, it's going straight up. All right, we're almost to the end here. I'll show you how to step up to start row four. 
it'll be pretty obvious when you get there, but sometimes it can be a little confusing. And that's okay. And this is the reason we do an even number because it does essentially make it much easier to identify where one row starts and one row ends. Sorry, if my camera keeps focusing in and out, I need to probably upgrade my camera here. Okay, last one. So we're coming out of, we're coming out of this bead right here in front of my thumb. And then you've got the one that you skip and the one you're supposed to go through. And you'll notice the one you go through has a, first, a white one here. So if you go through just the one red, like that, pull it through. And get that little white one to stay up on top pull it so that's the end of row three now where you're coming out of is a red a single red bead to start the next row basically you're just doing stair stepping you you're working in this direction so the next step up is through the white one so you're not adding a bead at the end or beginning of a row you're stepping up so this is where it it should look obvious that you can't add another bead so the only option is to go through so you go through the white bead it's wanting to loop around everything okay there you go you have completed three rows of peyote round stitch you're now coming out of this white bead and we're going to start row four. So I'm going to, I'm going to do another red row. So first, second, third rows might be the most difficult part of the whole process. But once you get that done, the rest is super easy because now you're just going through each bead that comes next, which these white beads I would call up beads because they're sticking up further in the project. So we pick up a single bead and we're gonna go through the next up bead. Okay, we're gonna pick up another bead and go through the next white up bead. Use your, your thumb. If you have nails, that helps. If not, just the pad of your thumb too helps because you're, you're pulling the string and you're pressing your, your work the opposite direction with your thumb to tighten it. You wanna keep your work tight. Picking up another bead, going through the next up bead. So I'm gonna do this, this last row here with you 
to show you again the ending of a row, the start of the next row. So I'm going just a little bit faster. And I'm a little tangled here. Hold on. Just because at the beginning I said that uh, you'll have <laughs> less tangles doesn't mean you won't get any. It happens. There we go. Okay. Back. Okay. We got two more spaces here. There's one. And here we're at the end. Well, let's get a little closer view here. You got one space left in between these two white ones. You're going to go through the white one <clears throat> and then that completes row three. To start the next row, you have nowhere to add a bead in here. So the next step is to step up, go through the red bead that is right next to that white one and pull tight. There you go. Same concept all the way up. You can change your colors, um, which ultimately changes your pattern. Uh, if I add another red row, basically it's going to be like a solid red band with some white dots. What you can also do is uh, try doing triangles. So if I were to do some triangles, then uh, maybe I might add some white here and get a little zigzag going on. Um, so play with, play with it. And if you get stuck, you have my phone number and my email, feel free to reach out. And I'm gonna stop this recording here. I will pick up towards the end uh, so that I can show you how to finish the project. And then we'll go from there. So enjoy your beating, uh, you know, put on a, a good TV show and sit there. If you get frustrated, step away for a little bit because that energy tends to go into your work. Um, you want it, you want good vibes, good positive energy. Ultimately, when you're, you're beating a feather, it's for someone else. So think of that person as you're working on the project and Put some put some good energy into it. Uh, all right, have a great day.